Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we can solve quadratic equations that do not factorize. And one method is by using the quadratic formula. And to demonstrate this I've got this equation here. Solve the equation 3x squared equals 8x minus 2. Giving you answers in part 1 in exact form and in part 2 to two decimal places. Now I know that this is a quadratic equation because it can be rearranged into this particular format which we often refer to as the format for quadratic equations. And that format is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 where a, b and c are constants. And I can rearrange this equation quite easily into this format by subtracting 8x and adding 2 to both sides. So if I therefore do that we're going to get 3x squared minus 8x plus 2 equals 0. Now normally what we would do when we've got a quadratic equation is to carry on and try and factorize it, put it into two brackets say where each of these factors would be equal to zero and then go on to solve it. But if you try to factorize this by putting things like 3x and x here and maybe a 2 there and a 1 there with a minus and a minus, you'll see it doesn't work. Okay, This gives us 3x squared, yeah, but we get minus 6x minus another x which is minus 7x. We get the plus 2 on the end here, but we're not getting the minus 8x. And if you try other combinations there, like switching the 2 and the 1 round, you still will not be able to factorize it. So how do we cope with this when it doesn't factorize? Well one method is to use what is called the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula enables us to work out x and it's equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of all of b squared minus 4 times a times c and this is all divided by 2 times a. And this formula is derived from method of completing the square and if you look at one of my later tutorials I've shown you how we go about proving this. But for now let's just accept that this works okay and I would strongly encourage you to learn this result. Now if we are looking at this equation here let's just put it down as one of several examples. We'll just put here examples. Then the equation we've got is 3x squared minus 8x plus 2 equals 0. So what would the value of a be? Well the value of a would equal 3. b here is going to be minus 8. We're adding minus 8. Okay, So b equals minus 8. So do take care on that one. As for the constant c here it's going to be 2. So c would equal 2. And I'll take you through in a moment placing these values into the formula here because there's a common mistake that is often made which you want to avoid. So that's one example. We'll just call this example A. And this will be the one that we'll be working through in a moment. But suppose you had to solve something like this. Just say x squared plus say 2.3x minus 5.2 equals 0. I've picked this equation as an example just to demonstrate a few points. With this one there is a number at the front of x squared. It's not naught but it's 1 so a would be equal to 1. You'll also notice that in this example I've given decimals as well because quite often you might find that you've got decimals in questions like this so very hard to try and factorize them. So we've got b here is going to be 2.3 so b would equal 2.3 and c this time is going to be negative 
rather than the positive value. So C will be minus 5.2. Now I'm going to get you to have a go at this one at the end of the video and hopefully you'll get it right. I'll give you the solution later on. So let's go back to tackling this question here. Now when it comes to solving a quadratic equation, if you're given something like this, give your answers in exact form or to two decimal places, this is always a hint that the equation that you've got will not factorize. So don't hang around on that. Try and go then straight for the quadratic formula. And that would give us x equaling then minus b, so that's going to be minus minus 8, which is positive 8. And then it's plus or minus the square root of all of b squared minus 4ac. Now this is the next mistake that's made, and I'll do it in red, okay? You'll often see this being written, minus 8, say, squared. What is minus 8 squared? You might think it's 64. It's not, in fact. This is a common mistake. We'll just put it down here as a common mistake. Minus 8 squared, like this, means minus 1 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 8. And that is going to come to minus 64, not, as we would hope, 64. If you don't believe me, just use the calculator. If you enter minus 8 and you press the square button, then equals, you can see you get minus 64. So to avoid this mistake, what you've got to do is use brackets. You've got to use brackets around the minus 8 here. Okay, so include that in brackets so that minus 8, when you square it, that means minus 8 multiplied with another minus 8. Or you could just use the multiplication sign here. You don't need to have brackets here. Check it out on your calculator. If we put the minus 8 in brackets and then square it, press equals, you see you get plus 64. And so even though you might know that the answer when you square minus 8 is 64, do put brackets around it. It's important when you get, say, decimals which you might not know what the answer is. And you're going to need to use the calculator, so always put your B part in brackets. And avoid this common mistake. So just border that round, okay, so that uh, hopefully you'll remember that. So carrying on then, we've got minus 4 times a times c. So it's minus 4, and I'll put this in brackets. a is 3, and c is positive 2. And this is all divided by 2 times a. So that's going to be 2 times 3. I know that's 6, but I'm just going to write that in purposely as 2 times 3 there. Now, if you are working with a non-calculator paper, then you're going to be expected to write this in exact form. And I'll take you through this, and then we'll check it out how we can enter this very efficiently on a calculator. So simplifying this, we've got 8, and then plus or minus the square root. Well, we know that minus 8 all squared is 64. For this term here, what we've got is 4 times 3, if we ignore the minus. 4 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. Now we've got 64 minus 24, which is 40. And this is all divided by 2 times 3, which is 6. Now using the rules for thirds, I can split the 40 up as 4 times 10. So we've got 8 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 10. I've picked 4 because it's a square number. And this is all divided by 6. 
So square rooting the 4 just gives me 2. And I'll leave the root of 10. So we get 8 plus or minus 2 multiplied by the square root of 10. And this is all divided by 6. Now you could go straight to the answer here, the exact form, by dividing top and bottom by 2. It's as if we're taking out 2 as a common factor here. If I take 2 out as a common factor, I'm going to get 2 times 4 plus or minus the square root of 10. And that is all divided by 6. And I could cancel top and bottom by 2. OK? Or, as I say, I could go to this step from here just by dividing top and bottom by 2, giving me 4 plus or minus the square root of 10. And that's all divided by 3. So, for part 1, this is my exact form. I've got that x can either equal 4 plus the square root of 10, all divided by 3, or I can have x equaling 4 minus the square root of 10, and that's all divided by 3. And that's my exact form. Now I did say that you could enter this into your calculator, and I'll show you how you can do that efficiently and get this answer. So to use a calculator then, I'm assuming you've got a calculator something like this. Press the fraction button and then just enter the 8 on the top line. Now instead of plus or minus, we'll just take plus first of all. We'll come back to the minus in a moment. Then press the square root sign and don't forget to press a bracket now and enter minus 8, close the bracket and press the square button. And then we've got minus 4 multiplied by the 3 multiplied by the 2. You don't need to put brackets, it's up to you if you do, but I'm just going to use the time sign and then it's going to be 3 times 2. We'll drop down to the next line, the denominator, and in the denominator I'm going to write 2 times 3. And so if we press equals, you'll see the calculator displays 4 plus root 10 all divided by 3. One of the exact answers that we got. Now for the other answer, the negative option, just take the cursor back up to the top just by pressing the left hand side and press across, now press up and now move it across just behind the plus sign. And then if you press delete and now enter the minus, press equals, you see you get 4 minus root 10 over 3. Now when it comes to giving your answers to two decimal places, then clearly you're going to need to use a calculator. So if you take this first answer here for x, 4 plus root 10 over 3, you'll find that it comes out to be 2.3874 and so on. And for the other value, x equals 0.2792 and so on. So that therefore x equals 2.39 or 0.28 if we give both to two decimal places. Okay, now what I'd encourage you to do is to have a go at solving this quadratic equation. We've got a equals 1, b equals 2.3 and c equals minus 5.2. So I'll give you a moment just to pause the video and when you come back I'll run very quickly through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So for this one, to get x, it's just going to be minus b, so it'll be minus 2.3 
plus or minus then the square root of all of b squared which is going to be 2.3 all squared. Do put that in brackets although with this one it is a positive value so you would get the same answer even if you left the brackets out. It's the negative ones you've got to be careful about. Then it's going to be minus 4 multiplied by a which is 1 multiplied by c which is minus 5.2 and all of this is divided by 2 times a 2 times 1 and if you work this out on your calculator giving your answers say to two decimal places you get x equals 1.40 and the other one is minus 3.70 and both of those are given then to two decimal places. So I know this has been a long tutorial but I hope it's given you everything you need to be able to solve quadratic equations then that do not factorize by this method using the quadratic formula. You can use the quadratic formula though on examples that factorize. It's up to you but we always use it as a method when quadratic equations don't factorize.